So here we go. Um, all right. So like I said, it's going to be everything, let's say 90% we've already covered with the cereal box. And that was the point of the cereal box was to kind of make it so that when we get to this point, it's not the first time you're doing all the Photoshop things. There's one thing I want to show you with the clone stamp. So I'm going to do this. My speed is going to be relatively fast, but please know that uh, I'm covering this all. I'm recording it all, and we've already covered 90% of it. All right. So I have my UV snapshot here. I just want to hit open with Photoshop. By doing that, isn't that an awesome MA Today logo? That was my other thought. Isn't that fantastic? All right. Uh, different lesson, different time. Okay. Here's where the stencil layer. I know some of you were like at the box, you're like, why the hell are we making a stencil layer? That doesn't make sense. The stencil layer is crucial for this thing. So if you were getting ahead of yourself on Photoshop and you're like, I keep having to select weird things, this is where the stencil layer comes into play. So I've opened up my snapshot in Photoshop. Looks beautiful. And so let's make a new layer. The way to make a new layer is down here. There's a little thing, <laughs> create new, or you can hit Command Shift N for new layer, or you can go up here too where it says layer, new layer, right? I'm going to call this my stencil layer. If you don't name things, you'll get fired from a company, but if you don't name things with me, you won't get fired. You won't even get your grade marked down. You're ju you just might get confused later. So I try to name stuff even when I'm going fast, but it's not. One more thing before we really get started. This cheat sheet is on the pickup folder. So same place where you got an example snapshot. If you scroll down below, there's a UV map Photoshop cheat sheet right here. It points to all the things that we used. I tried to kind of make it all in one sheet with very concise instructions. So if you need a real, how do I change the color? Oh yeah, there it is. How do I add text? Oh yeah, there it is. Where's the spill bucket? Oh yeah, there it is, right? You can grab this. If this were on the final, you could use this on the final, but this is not going to be on the final. All right. You got <laughs> Yes. All right. Um, you'll learn about, you'll review the final on Monday. All right, here we go. Got my stencil, got my background layer. Okay, here's a stencil is crucial for your character. So here's what I'm going to do. Have my background layer selected. That's the crucial part. Go to my wand tool. If you can't see your wand, your wand is hidden under the quick selection tool. So you left click and hold and then choose magic wand. Boom. Now nine times out of 10, when there's a problem with Photoshop, you're probably either not on the right layer or you forgot to hit enter with your, your free transform tool. So make sure you're on the background layer, not your blank layer. If you didn't make a blank layer, that's Command Shift N, or it's the little button down here. Okay, enough repeating. <coughs> selected my background layer, selected my wand. I click anywhere that's not a UV shell. I, I click in the negative space of my UV map. And what that did was it gave a nice, cool outline to my entire thing. And now I'm going to bump up my selection to my stencil layer. So right here, I'm going to click my stencil. And now I'm going to pick a color I know that's not going to exist on the bear. So I'm pretty sure my bear is not going to be pink. So I'm going to pick a, bi a bright pink, prink, pink, pop, fuchsia, if you will. Because I know my bear is not going to have much pink on it. Or cyan. I'll do cyan. bear's not going to have any cyan on either. I was just saying, maybe my bear is inside of his mouth. It's going to have a little red. So maybe I don't want So that's why I switched it to cyan. <coughs> okay. All right. Now I'm going to find my spill bucket. My spill bucket is hidden underneath my gradient. I'm sorry. It used to be called spill bucket. It's called paint bucket now. So I click on my paint bucket. I make sure my color is there. I make sure I'm on the right layer. And I paint bucket anywhere and it made my stencil layer. And Photoshop is all about being cognizant of which layer and just continually making new layers. And if you did the cereal box, you could, you don't need, to, if you feel confident from the cereal box, you don't need to really listen to me right now. This is all review. Okay. 
And now I want to make a new layer. I don't want to ruin my stencil layer. I want to make a new layer. So I'm going to hide my background layer. And now I just have my stencil, right? I can hide by clicking on these eyeballs. I'm going to make another new layer by clicking on that button or command shift N. I'm going to rename it. I'm going to call this base color. And now with my magic wand, I'm going to do a very similar process. But instead of grabbing my background layer, I'm going to grab, I'm going to use on my stencil layer. And I'm going to grab everything but my, my junk pile. That's my black junk pile. That's my white junk pile. And I'm not going to do my hands. I'm actually going to give my hands and feet a slightly different color. Okay. So I'm going to hit stencil here. And even though I can see my UV layers, even though I, I decided not to hide them, when I, am I, if I'm on my stencil layer and I have a magic wand, if I click there, it, it's hard to see on my screen, but you can see the, the ants marching just on my thing. Now, if I were on the background layer and I were to click right there, it only selects that one box. And then I have to like do multiple selections and it becomes a big pain in the ass, right? So I want to make sure I'm on my stencil layer and I select the body, my legs, my head, and my arm. And just double checking, I have a stencil for all of them. So I'm giving this whole body a base color. Okay. Now, here's the trick. You have to remember, I'm on my stencil layer right now. I actually need to be on my new layer, my another new layer. The layer I already made called base color. And now I can use the spill bucket. I can go to the spill bucket. And instead of choosing, once again, spill bucket's hidden underneath the gradient. <coughs> and then I can go up here to my blue. I'm going to change my blue and I'm going to make it. I'm going to start off with orange and then pull the orange way, way, way down. And that usually gives me a good brown. So that's a good way to get a good brown. Whoop. And hit OK. And now I'm going to spill bucket in any one of those sections. It can be whatever color for your character. My character is going to be brown. And boom, I have a mostly brown bear. If I don't really like that brown now that I see it, I'm like, eh, maybe it'll make it a little lighter. There we go. That's a nice brown bear. Go back to my spill bucket. Everything's still selected. Or I can do it individually like that. Another reminder, remember in Photoshop world, it's not Command Z, it's Option Command Z. Option Command Z. Now I don't have to do, here's a new tool. New tool, new tool, new tool, new tool, new tool. I don't have to use Spill Bucket. I have, this is my white spot, this is my black spot. I can use a paintbrush. I can just draw. So there's a brush right here. Everyone see the brush? I have I have um, the size of the brush is up here. Remember your options always show up on top up here. You have your tools here on the left, options here. So new tool, brush. I can kind of select the type of brush I want. Do I want it to fill solid? Do I want it to, to have a feather? And then I, you can even, there's other brush types. Darren can go really crazy on brush types for us later. Right, Darren? Darren's a Photoshop expert over there. Um, he probably knows more than me. Um, and then I'm just gonna, on my still on my base color layer, I'm not gonna do the magic wand because I know these, these spots are small. I'm gonna select white. I'm selecting white because these are my teeth. And I'm just going to be like, boop. Oh, why aren't you? Oh, because I have my selections on. To get rid of a selection, I hit Command D. And so on my base color layer, I'm just going to go white. Da bam. I just painted over my white pile. This is black. 
because those are my those are like my nails. So I'll pick like a maybe close to black, maybe like a little a little gray in there. And then I'm going to paint this spot black. And I don't even have to class. I don't even have to do the spill bucket for any of this. If I wanted to, I want to make my hands a little bit lighter of a color. So I can go here and now I'm going to choose my color picker for the brown. And I'm going to kind of kick this up to be like a slightly light lighter color for my hands and feet. Maybe darker. I'm going to do darker. Like that. I can just brush. I'm brushing the color over the, the UV mat, like so. And then I'll do this here too. So you can just kind of do this. Sometimes this works better or faster. For a piece like this, I might want to, maybe I can just increase my brush size, just be really sloppy. There you go. The only problem with doing the brush method is sometimes there's a hole that sometimes you don't get at all, and that's why we have this bright blue spot. There's definitely pluses and minuses to doing the spill bucket. Let me change brushes to this sucker. Need to be a little bit more precise. Did I just switch to eraser? I did. Let's go to my brush type for that. There we go. Can I still on eraser? There we go. No. I'm just kind of coloring that in. And this is not kindergarten. You can color outside the lines. It's actually good to kind of color outside the lines. So I'm kind of just coloring the general area. Okay. Second on my list. Going back to here are my, re my requirements. Fully colored. Check. Going back to Photoshop. Boom. Fully colored. Okay. What's my next step? At least three in any combination, text, icon, logos, shapes, textures. At least three, okay? So now I gotta figure out what I wanna do. So let me, this is gonna go really, really, really fast. Actually, one more thing and then real fast. Mr. G, I wanna see my UV map on top of everything because I need to put, make sure that the T or the M or the L for the Luigi or the upside down L for the Waluigi, which is not really an upside down L. It's actually a gamma or whatever. Um, you want to make sure you put that in the right place. How do I get to see my UV map? Does anyone remember? What? 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 Green? Six? Six? Oh, six is on the, the Maya part. All right. If you want to see the UV shell on top of your care on top of your colors, you got to duplicate your background layer. Everyone watching, here's how to get your UV map on top. Right click, duplicate the layer, pull it on up to the top. But Mr. G, I can't see anything. All right? So what you got to do is you have to change this to screen. Screen. So screen basically is like a silk screen. I don't know if you've ever played with a silk screen. So if something is, is white, it becomes perfectly opaque and doesn't allow anything to go through it. If it's black, it lets everything go through it. Um, that's how a silk screen works too. And then get to my All right, now you can do whatever you want. So let me do, let me go go through the rest very fast. I know I keep saying I'm gonna go very fast. I'm going very fast though. All right, so let's say I wanted to make him super bear, or if I wanted to put a B because he's Barry, Barry the bear. So I wanted to put a big red B in the middle of his chest, right? So to do text, I'm gonna hit T for text. I'm gonna pick my font. Rockwell is a good font for me right now. Bold is good. I'm going to pick my color for my font up here, not down here. The color for my font gets picked right here. And I can make them, um, let's make a nice big bright red B. And I'm going to type it in right here. B. 
B. Just this plain old B. Or you can do Barry. Whatever I want. All right, I'll just put B. Okay? Go back to my selection tool. Mr. G, I want to make it bigger. Mr. G, I want to um, rotate it. Does everyone remember the hot key to move stuff, rotate stuff, scale stuff? So say it again. Say it loud. Say it proud. Command T. If you have that pickup, if you have the, sh the cheat sheet, it's right on top. Command T for your transform. I hit Command T. I can rotate it. If I hold the shift key, it locks it to every 15 degrees, so I can get a perfect 90 degree turn. And then I can scale it up. And then with my new little UV guides, I can kind of put it right exactly where I want. And it's gonna be right about there and hit enter. Okay? That's how you do text. T. Sorry, my phone's blowing up. Okay, next. I'm going to add a shape. Shapes are handy, especially if I'm making this a superhero bear. So I could add a shape. Shapes are over here, class. And a shape can be circle square or something random. So I'm just going to make a circle here. And again, the colors and the options are all right here. So for my fill, I'm actually going to want my fill to be, let's say, white. And then for the stroke, which is Adobe's word for outline, I'll make that red. And then there's actually ways to make an outline. So I'll make a solid outline. And then now when I draw the circle, it'll be like this. Boop. Oh, man. What happened, Mr. G? Everyone look up at my screen. What happened? Why did my B go away? Because because my layers, right? So nine times out of ten, when you guys are noticing a problem, it's usually your wrong layer. So I'm going to drag my B up there. Boom. I can reposition it a little bit. Get it just right. Oops. That's not what I want to do. Go back to my move tool. Get that B just right. Boom. Now I have a B insignia. Technically, I'm two down. Right? If I'm going by my list, I now have a... I know it's an icon and a text, but my text and I have a shape. I have two images already. Okay? I have two out of the three requirements done. But I'll, I'll show you how to do each one thing. So I've done text. I've shown you how to do text. Um, I've shown you how to do shapes. Okay? You could grab stuff off the internet. So, like, let's say I wanted to do, do something off the internet. Now, if you're not good with the selection tool, if you were doing um, the Photoshop or the cereal box, and um, so I want to add some flames. I'm going to give them some, some, you know, some Guy Ferrari flames, right? So I'm going to type in flame design. Z. This, the internet's going bonkers today. There you go. Hit images. Be careful you don't grab something with a uh, watermark on it, right? You just got to kind of be a little scrutinous. That looks pretty, uh, that might have a watermark on it too. Just got to keep looking. Eh. So you can also do no watermark. No water mark. That might help. Might not. Yeah. 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 No watermark. If you're not really good with the selection tools, you could also do transparent background in your search. Right? <laughs> So you could try no watermark and transparent background, the trifecta here, transparent background. And I don't even have to do any sort of selection. Boom. Ooh, that's real estate sign. Right? How about that one? Boom. So that's a, a nice way to cheat. Okay? All right. Now that i got some images to play with, and I have my, I have my UV guide up here, okay. So this was my leg, okay. This part's the upper thigh. This part's the fire. So if I wanted to like kind of add this flame logo, I can just drag it on top. <coughs> and this is with the, the white part. I'm gonna have to rotate it. Remember to rotate. You kind of click outside. Something like that. Why do I want to add a flame logo? Yeah, I don't know. Right. 
And then if I wanted to get rid of all this white, I can hit the magic wand, and I can select the white area. Now it has a few little random weird specs. So the place I can play with the wand is the tolerance. And if I decrease it, it usually makes it more picky. And it gave me more specs. So actually 40, I might even go up to 50. 50. And I'm going to select this side. Did I get most of it? Yep. I'm going to shift select the other side. So remember, shift adds. And then I'm going to press delete. Uh-oh. Class. Uh-oh. Mr. G. Someone's going to be asking me this in five minutes. I guarantee it because you're all trying to think you got it. Mr. G. Mr. G. Daniel already said the answer. Don't say it again, Daniel. I'm glad Daniel's here. Mr. G, I can't. I can't delete my thing. Okay, you have to just kind of commit this one to memory. Anyone besides Daniel know what to do? Rasterize. rasterize thank you. It's because I made you guys repeat it. Maybe you should all repeat it again. Repeat the word "rasterize" to your neighbor now. Ready? What do you think? Go. <laughs> Boom. Thank you. Even the advanced kids win. Bam. All right. That did an okay job. I'm gonna get rid of my selection by hitting Command D. Now, it doesn't really fill out my entire, it doesn't really work the pattern with my, my UV map here, right? My UV map kind of needs more. New tool, new tool. Mr. G is showing you a new tool. It's pretty awesome. It's called the clone stamp. All right. So, uh, uh, you could do a couple things here if you wanted to continue uh, your flame more along the leg here, right? I could duplicate the layer, and now I have a copy of the layer, and then I can move it along and rotate it again. You know, I can do another Command T, do a little rotate. I can kind of move it along, right? And now I have more flame in more places. That's one way to do it. That's totally a way to do it, okay? But here is one tool that people have a lot of fun with called the clone stamp. The clone stamp's right here. It takes a little practice. If you don't use it, that's fine, but I just wanted to show it to you. I'm going to increase the size of the brush. I can also do that up here. So I'm making a pretty decent thing. And now I have to set the target. So holding the option key, it turns into this little target, and I can hit target right here. Now I let go. And notice what's happening. You guys see this? So I can actually, it's like a copy and paste <coughs> brush. And that's, and then it always helps to kind of reset again where you're copying from. And I can kind of just make more flames. It adds this like little transparency to it. So the clone tool, oops, sorry, lets you quickly kind of spread the, if I target right here, and then maybe put another flame that, ooh, yeah. It is a nice, fun job of kind of just adding some flames. Once again, the, the trick to the clone tool is to continually reassign the target to kind of play with it some more. Let's see. There you go. So clone stamp is really good. So that's how you add an image. Again, if you aren't good at the selection tool. Oops, that didn't work. That didn't give me a good transparent background. How about this one? Does this one come in good? Ah, uh, no. Damn. So if you find something with a good transparent background, you don't even have to do the selection tool. You also have the magic, the not the magic wand, but the magnetic lasso. And you can copy and paste. All right, what haven't I shown you? One second, please. Showing you the text, shapes, icons. Oh, or you could also, this counts, this counts as an object or something. You can use the paintbrush. So I can go up here to the brush. I want to give my, my bear some eyebrows. So maybe I pick brown and then I make it a little lighter. And I could literally make a new layer. And I can just paint. Paint counts as a separate object. I want to give them like eyebrows, something like that. And 
oops, and we put that on top. There we go. Okay, question. Did you press six? Did you load it as a CSV file or as a, did you press six in the perspective window? Press six right now. Press six again. You're in your UV window. Go to your perspective window. Press six. Ah, there we go. You said yeah and you didn't. You dismissed my concern. Okay. So do the best that you can in the time that you can right now. On Friday, we'll attach it back to our object and we'll turn it in. We'll, we'll make some tweaks to it. We'll turn it in. Some of you are going to have a lot of patterns and logos and stuff on it. You can do buttons. Like if you're doing Luigi, Luigi's got two buttons. And he's got his L for Luigi. And sometimes he has the L on the chest. You could make a fireball Luigi. You can do all sorts of stuff. Um, so it's really your imagination. Um, just make sure that you have that. And then Monday, we'll go over how to attach it. 